mean, this is the first we've seen it in sunlight since I was seven years old, six years old. We lost our mom when we were much younger in 1994. And it was Mother's Day of the following year after she passed. And my dad wanted to do something nice and take us all out in the car. And so long story short, we, on the way home from the cemetery, I uh, got pulled over by a cop. The top was stuck open, it started to rain. He had the wrong license plate on the car. It wasn't registered, wasn't insured, no seat belts. Um, yeah, and you know, he had to get it towed, brought back here. My grandparents had to pick us up and he put it back in this coop and it sat there ever since. And here we are, you know, almost 30 years later. Um, I'm just really trying to do something nice for him since you know, he's done so much for so many people in our lives and you know, he's been a single parent since my mom passed. And so, I don't know, it's just nice for all of us to do something for him and <laughs> shit, give back a little bit, you know? Yeah. A few months earlier, Mike reached out to see if I could help surprise his dad by getting the Lincoln back into shape and hopefully inspire Mr. Zlotnick to get it back on the road in the future. When I arrived at the Zlotnick office, you can clearly see that they're in the construction business and have a love of all things automotive. I met up with Mike Zlotnick, who showed me the chicken coop where the car had been stored since the Mother's Day impound in 1995. To get inside the building, we actually had to go through a side door because the main garage door wouldn't open from the outside. <sighs> Haven't been back here in forever. Looks like it. What is this? Yeah. Oh, so uh, we're actually in a chicken coop right now. My, my grandparents used to have a farm back in the 50s and 60s. So this is one of the original uh, feed rails that they would feed thousands and thousands of birds. And this railing system ran up and down the whole length of the coop. So this whole thing is a chicken coop? Yep. I mean, car just parts everywhere. Car nails. parts. You have all the nails in the world if you want. Galvanized, hopefully. We got some old <laughs> hunting decoys from when we were kids. My dad would take us. Oh, wow. Um, that all back there was a bunch of desks and like tables from an old school that they, they helped renovate. So, you know, instead of throwing it out, it's sort of that depression era mentality, you know, might as well save it and try to recycle it. Those are stretchers? Yeah. Uh, surplus uh, army military stretchers that my wow. grandpa got. Uh, he was a paratrooper in World War II. Bust out a light here. It gets a little dark, but oh my gosh. here we are. Here's the... Uh, the car, as you can see, there's a garage door back there, but we're, my younger brother's trying to come back from a job site right now to help us get that open. Um, it's been stuck for, for a year. Ooh. It's in, not, it's in not terrible condition so far. I was, didn't know what I was expecting. It's yeah. a lot of real estate, like any, oh, yeah. like any Lincoln. One of my favorite parts of liberating an old car is seeing the garage time capsule in which it was left. There was old oil cans, toy cars, glass containers, bowling ball, fireman's helmet, and drums of oil, all exactly as they had been left nearly 30 years earlier. Mission one was pretty simple. Just try to get the garage door open, not just to get the car out for obvious reasons, but to let in light and let in air and just so we could see what we were doing. Mike's youngest brother, Greg, the mechanic in the family, used a pry bar to open up the door just enough to slide underneath, but the door was off the track and it was frozen, but nothing a hammer couldn't fix. Once we thought we had it open and everything was good, the door popped off the rails and whacked Mike on the side of the head, which was clearly foreshadowing the pain to come in the days ahead. With a bit more light, you can see that the tire is very flat and dry rotted. The undercarriage is covered in spider webs and who knows what else. But the first thing we need to do is to see if the tire could hold at least a little bit of air so we could roll it out without actually dragging the whole thing. To do this, Greg got his compressor with Annie by his side. Now, Annie is the most amazing, sweetest little puppy I've ever met in my life. Such a great personality. She goes with Greg everywhere and was helpful in moving all the boxes out of the way. <laughs> With the tire almost half full, the fuse blew on the compressor, naturally, so we had to use the Milwaukee cordless tool to finish on battery power, but the clock is ticking as the tire will not hold air for very long. Next, Greg quickly got his bobcat and pulled inside the garage to yank the 5,000 pound tank out into the daylight. Once all hooked up, Greg's employee, Jake, hopped in to steer while Mike and I watched both sides to avoid banging into stuff along the sides on the way out. <laughs> you breathing all right in there? Yeah. <laughs> nice and slow. You're gonna have to cut it to the right a little bit. All right, Greg, we gotta coordinate because he's got no power steering. So go nice and slow and we're gonna start cutting it because we gotta get by this table. 
Yep, hard the other way. Turn to the left, turn to the left, turn to the left. Look at that poop. Once it was outside, you could really get the full scope of its size and really appreciate the amount of mouse poop and urine present from just sitting all these years. Well, here you go, man. This thing looks pretty, pretty good, wow. even though there's mouse poo everywhere. <laughs> That's pretty normal here. Yeah, wow. Far for the course, I'd say. Yeah. You got acorns in there. I think yeah. we can bring it back. It's going to look a whole lot better. We'll see what we can do with the Get this engine running and uh, hopefully, he doesn't know that we're doing this obviously, right? No, right. not a clue. This is gonna be awesome. We sent them on a goose chase this morning. There's a bit of work to do, but let's get it back to the shop, clean it up, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. Next, awesome. we pulled the car out into the driveway to line it up for the trailer, which became more of a project than actually removing it from the chicken coop in the first place. Pulling it backwards was no problem with the Bobcat, obviously. Pushing 5,400 pounds up into a trailer with no electric winch, not so easy. So Jake and Greg came up with a hand winch that was rigged up to the front of the trailer to help us during the push because the winch nor us could do it by ourselves, but we did make it work. You can keep it now. This is yours forever. We're not, we don't want it back. <laughs> with the car and trailer packed up, we headed down to the studio. Just as a point of reference, the 1963 Lincoln Continental was 17 feet 9 inches long, 6 feet 6.6 .6 inches wide, weighing over 2.5 tons, which required the largest displacement engine used by a Ford for a passenger vehicle at the time, a 7 liter V8 with 320 horsepower, 465 foot pounds of torque. It was also rear wheel drive, three speed automatic, suicide doors, and the first car sold in the United States with a manufacturer two year. 24,000 mile warranty and the first four door convertible produced from an American manufacturer since World War II. In total, over 21,000 were produced, but only an estimate of two to 3,000 remain on the road today. Hey guys, wanted to give you a quick update on the car detailing simulator. The free to play demo version of the game is now going live, which means you'll be able to try the game for yourself and use the ammo downloadable content, which includes the exact model of the ammo studio with all the original artwork on the walls, all the products, tools, and exotic cars that you see in the videos. For more information, click the link in the description to check out the game on Steam. When we opened up the trailer when we got back to the studio, the confined space inside caused the urine smell to accumulate and absolutely reek. So we knew we were in for a real treat. Inside, under the lights, the level of mouse poo rivals that of the 280 SL Mercedes episode now with over 20 million views that was pulled out of a garage and restored before it was revealed to the owner by his son. Super fun car to work on. Click the link above to watch it next. The very next morning, I came into the studio only to find mice running all over the place. So I knew I needed to start on this 5,000 pound nest immediately. Look at this right here. Because of the mouse infested car, now I have mice. Look at this little guy. Hey, this is not a place for you, buddy. Look at this. He's staring at me. Buddy. No, 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 don't go in there. Now, under normal circumstances, I would work on the interior first, but because there's so much junk on the outside of the car, I needed to just blow that off before I went too much further. It's likely I'll do a second full wash in a few days, but think of this as just a quick mow down wash for now. To avoid any major splashes on the inside, I first quickly taped up the windows, then got the pressure washer and started deep poopifying the paint. Soon thereafter, my floor was completely covered in black poo dots everywhere.
Now with the paint somewhat clean, we performed a quick test spot to see how the single stage paint would react to the polish. As expected, it's sticky with tons of residue, but once you remove the old oxidized paint, what's underneath looks way better. The clarity is roughly 50% better after just a few passes, so we were going in the right direction. As you can see here, after a few wipes, look at how dirty the paint is after the initial mow down technique. Absolutely wild how much that single stage paint holds on to dirt. Halfway through the car, I switched to a new pad because it was so caked up. Now check out the color change after just one session of polishing. Luckily, my friend Dan from Turn 7 was available to help with this land yacht. The paint was equal to, let's say, two or three 911s. The thing is absolutely huge. He worked on the tight areas while I worked on the wider parts and vice versa. But I found something interesting on the passenger side front corner panel. Okay, one of the many cool things about working on an older car is it has single stage paint. And sometimes you find things that you didn't expect to find. So the first thing right off the bat, single stage paint. Uh, when you're polishing it, basically there's, uh, on a very old car, it's like a shell. It's like this old dead skin on top of the paint, on top of the real sort of rejuvenated beautiful paint. So when you polish, you pick up tons and tons of whatever the color is in this case. Let's say, let's just call it red for argument's sake. It's filling the pad right now and then I have to blow it out. What that means is I'm pulling off all the dead skin underneath. It looks halfway decent for a car that's been sitting in a garage for 30 plus years. The second thing is you find things on the car that you didn't expect to find. If you take the camera and kind of come behind me here, you can see right here in the light, you see that there? This clearly has been repainted because there's two different colors. And as I'm polishing, the paint is moving in like this, meaning these, these areas, I'm removing bits and bits of the paint that was put on there. Also, if you look very closely, you can see little uh, crow's feet in here, which means cracking from underneath. Again, indicative of paint that had been hit. Maybe it has something to do with this. I don't know, maybe it's just a coincidence, but when you're working on a car like this, there's all these cool things uh, and stories. So I'm gonna ask them about this particular uh, spot. Hey, was there something hit here? So the paint sort of tells you what happened over the years, pretty cool. On the top of the doors, you can see there is a concave little area. We used a one inch rotary here and clearly it did an amazing job in that tight little spot. The next day, I moved the car over to bay number one for a bit more room once the brand new GT3 detail was all finished. That video is coming very soon. That car is amazing. As you can see, the interior is dusty, moldy, full of spider webs, and the carpet contains a million droppings and acorns everywhere. By the way, can anyone tell me from a evolutionary perspective why mice leave thousands of visible droppings everywhere that it already lives? It doesn't make any sense to me. You'd think that it'd be detrimental to its survival because you can actually just follow the trail and then exterminate them or whatever. Anyways, there's got to be some sort of scientist out there that knows the answer, but I digress. Likewise, the doors are covered in the exact same cocktail of mold, dust, and mouse droppings as well. The seats obviously are in the same exact condition as the doors and the floor, but this time the leather is so dried out and brittle that it may never come back to full suppleness. So it's likely that these would need to be recovered if the boys can convince Mr. Z to go all in on the restoration. My goal is pretty simple. Just remove as much as I possibly can so that he can sit inside the car and not get sick. Now check this out, danger keep hands away. I've never seen that before on a convertible. In my research, I couldn't find if this was a factory applied warning or done afterwards. If you know, leave a comment. Now having seen and smelled all of it, it's now time for bunny soup. First inspection, uh, there's clearly a ton of actual heavy poop in there, along with little egg corns and all kinds of little uh, uh, nests in the spider webs. So the first thing we're going to do is just do a very quick vacuum so I don't get covered in it and then we can go hit it with a steamer and then we're going to probably do two or three vacuums after we do the shampoo machine. So step number one, vacuum. <laughs> Thank you.
Check out the home I found in the door panel, the first of many I'd find. If the acorns and droppings weren't enough, the chewed up paper towel is a sure guarantee that rodents have made a nest or home in whatever it is you find that paper trail in. After round one of vacuuming, I took a quick air breather as the bunny suit is ridiculously hot. I filled up the ammo US steamer with water and let it heat up for a few minutes. It's pretty simple. You can tell it's pressurized when the gauge gets into the green. While we're waiting for things to heat up, I got suited up again, got all the interior brushes and all the products ready to go, plugged in the steamer hose and installed the tri-tip nozzle for heavy cleaning. On the driver's side seat, I gently steamed the area just to get it a bit warm before spraying lather and then steaming again with the scrubber covered in a microfiber towel to decrease its aggressiveness because of the extra wear compared to the other seats in the car, which is super common on pretty much every single driver's side seat. On the stronger areas, like the top of the armrest, you can be a bit more aggressive with the scrubber. Just obviously adjust according to the material's age and durability. For the tight areas on the dashboard, I switched to a single hole sniper attachment to use the steam's pressure to flush out the seams and the crevices, which are super common again on older cars with intricate designs and exposed buttons. Next, I worked my own personal therapy session on the gas and brake pedals. Next up was the grimy and faded dashboard with lather and short bristle interior brush. Check this out. There's uh, three little things on this car that I think are so cool. First one, you have manual up and down for the vents here. This thing actually turns on left to right, left to right, up and down. Uh, that's so nice. Now come up here, check this out. This, from what I understand, looks like a, looks like a camera of some sort, but I called Kevin and he said that this thing in particular is when somebody had their lights shining at you, it would catch capture that light and then dim your own headlights, which is amazing back in the 60s to think about it. Now come up here and uh, look at that. That's night and day to change the mirror around. I just find pushing buttons so much more pleasurable than doing like haptic touch. But this is what made these cars so special. As I was cleaning the glove box and the grime started to turn yellow, my gut and my nose told me that door number two was going to be interesting. By the way, look how nice the trim shined up. I love old cars. These things are amazing. We can definitely see 
where they came in from, there's a hole right there that leads from this little gully here, goes all the way up, there's a hole right there. And this is where they lived for sure because the bottom is completely covered in urine. Okay, if you watch any of my videos, you know that the glove box is a hot spot for uh, mice infestation. We just got a ton of this out. This is probably one of the most I've ever uh, removed. And we're going to put it in a plastic bag and take it outside. Now, I've received comments in the past saying, why are you wearing a bunny suit uh, and gloves and this kind of thing? And of course, this ridiculous mask. And the reason is, and the reason I'm not taking it off, is sincerely, we are becoming very itchy uh, on the top of our head. Uh, so clearly, uh, something is going on uh, from a dirty perspective. So for us to come in and to clean this prior to the mechanic getting in and maybe disassembling it or whatever the guy wants to do is essential because people can actually get hurt from this. And I can tell you, all kidding aside, um, the top of my head, I, I, that's why I have a shower here, is feels like things are biting. And I had this on, if you see in the beginning of the video, I had this on first and I was getting too hot and I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous, I don't need to wear it. Now I'm regretting it because uh, I'm super itchy. Anyways, I'm going to pick all this stuff up. We're going to take a little break, vacuum this, and kind of get as much as we can out. And then we can start the shampoo process. Next up was the door panels. After the doors, I filled the shampoo machine and went after the carpets with hot water and the extractor. The carpets were not filthy in terms of dirt and oil and that kind of thing. It was more of a bacteria, feces, urine situation. The before and after is pretty significant, but obviously how it looks is a very secondary concern when biohazards are involved. Again, it's very likely that the seats in the carpets would need to be replaced if Mr. Z decides to go down that rabbit hole. The goal is just to make it safe enough so that he can get in and feel good about his surprise in the next couple of days. All right, well, we just finished up the interior, step number one, let's call it, and it looks pretty good. We also shampooed it, took a ton of poop off the floor. I know that sounds crazy, but I can only imagine what's in that shampoo machine right now. But anyhow, while it's drying out, we're gonna focus on the engine. As you can see over here, there's like a highway of mouse poop going into the car. Of course, the glove box, there's some over here as well. So this is a bit of a disaster. Clearly it's not running, so we're gonna have to power wash it and just get it into a condition that a mechanic can work on it. Now, the first thing I like to do when I get into these situations is I pull the dipstick just to see if there's any oil in it, just to kind of feel like maybe the mechanic can do something. So right off the bat, yeah, look at that. That is uh, decent oil. I wouldn't call that great, but it's not black. So we have, uh, we have some lubrication in it. So that's step one, kind of cool. He'll deal with that later. Second thing is taking the air box off. Typically, this is a home for mice. So I'm gonna put this over here, open it up and see what's going on here. So we're gonna put a towel over here, power wash it and get it ready for the mechanic. After covering up the carburetor, I blew out the tight spots and then added Titan degreaser to the existing brute in the foam gun to zap whatever I could for the future mechanic. What's nice is these older engines are a bit more robust than say the finicky electric components of the engines these days. If a 91 year old engine can start up after sitting in the woods for years that we cleaned up a few weeks ago, I bet this one will be just fine. At this point, I let the engine soak a few minutes with degreaser and then scrubbed it a bit and then flushed it out with the power washer and all the heavy junk just rinsed out. The egg corns, everything fell on the floor. It's crazy to think how much stuff was living in the engine compartment. Afterwards, I washed the air box with degreaser and power wash once again, only to find a spider and yet another mouse carcass. After cleaning out the shampoo machine to avoid a horrible stink the next day when you come into work, I had to take a shower and scrub my head, which was incredibly itchy and just gross. It's not a good idea to bring all this junk home to your family. We're going to take a break and come back tomorrow and start this thing all over again.
Bright and early and freshly scrubbed, the next day, I added mousse conditioner to the seats as a very last resort and to continually test products in the worst case scenario to measure what and how the product can be improved. As you can imagine, the leather just soaked it up instantly, but it did look a little bit better. As I mentioned earlier, I love the intricacies of older cars. They're so ornate and handmade. The dash has a ton of electroplated plastics in need of gentle polishing to bring a bit of life back to them. So to do this, I'm using flits on a microfiber towel by hand. As a final test, I like to blow out all the seams and crevices one last time to flush out the remaining bits that can be quickly vacuumed up. All right, guys, well, we're rounding third on this land yacht. Now, normally what I would do is put Reflex Pro on there and then play around with the chrome and, and kind of fiddits around until the owner comes. Now, in this case, because it's so big and there's so much bright work everywhere, we're gonna rewash it again. This time, we're gonna focus on using Boost, which is an acidic wash. It's gonna help sort of brighten up all the chrome and all the polished areas here like this, like this right here. And it's gonna look a whole lot better. Once we're done with that, then we'll put Reflex on it. So let's do it. This is the all-new anti-salt boost with low pH for removing mineral deposits. It also works well on brightening up metal bumpers and trim pieces, so we're going to use it here. First, I applied plumb to the wheels and the lower rockers, then pre-soaked the top in Titan degreaser. Keep in mind that the first wash we did was just to remove all the excess spiders and poo and so on. This is going to be more focused on cleaning the tight spots, brightening up the metal, and removing the sticky residue from the compound and polishing phase. For the roof, I scrubbed with a Scotch-Brite white pad and interior brush on the seams before drying with a microfiber towel and compressed air. Next, I polished all the bright work by hand in the tight areas and machine on the larger areas. Now, clearly, as you can see, did it come out perfect? No, but it does look much better than it did before. Next, I reflex the paint, and there is a lot of paint to do. Then I gelade the rims and the metalwork afterwards. Afterwards, the glass was scrubbed, squeegeed, and dried. <laughs> All right. And then the rear convertible window was polished by hand with Rupes blue and a little bit of yellow in certain spots to remove the light layer of oxidation to freshen up the top that will most likely need to be replaced in the future if we can convince Mr. Z to restore the car. Finally, for the white walls, I scrubbed with a seam and stitch brush and a little bit of Titan. Again, clearly, these are total junk, so tire shine doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's only for the presentation or the wow factor for when he walks in tomorrow for the surprise. Well guys, after four very long days, we are now done with the land yacht. The only thing left to do is to surprise the dad. Exciting. I'll get it going. I'm like sort of nervous. This is, this, is, uh... this is exciting stuff. <laughs> are you guys ready up there? Okay. All right. Please. I think so. Um, yeah. What, what, well, this kid doesn't know. What's that? No, he doesn't know. Let's, uh, here. Well, Let's pop in. I want to show you something pretty cool in here. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> clearly, uh, we're not at an architect's place. Um, no. and I apologize for having to tell a few white lies to get you here. Mr. But... Z, nice to meet you. Heard a lot about you. <laughs> oh, Jesus Truth be told, uh, a few months ago, we kidnapped the Lincoln with Larry. He's a world-renowned car detailer. And you know we wanted to try to do something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we want to try to do something nice for you. Uh, Say hi. 
Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So exciting. You ready? <laughs> Gosh, I mean, when we saw this in the okay. coop before okay. Dad, it was uh, just covered in mold and really? it was yeah, disgusting. Yeah, the in interior was black. And so yeah. there's only so much you can do on the interior because it's starting to lose its, its material. Eventually, this will be theirs, you know, mm. along with all the other I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, I was at your place. We filmed. Oh, shit. He came yeah, to the I, office. I came to we, pull, spent, we pulled this out. We spent five so hours pulling out. this thing out. You were out playing golf. golf. I told Keenan to take you out. This, is, this has been in the works for a while. Yes, yes. Yeah, months. <laughs> this car's months. been here. You know, I wish I had the dog. I've been running around after mice all over here. <laughs> I have video. We've been filming this thing for a couple of weeks, if not a month or two. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you were playing golf that day. Yeah. We were it smells clean. Yeah. It kind of looked like, like that. Yeah. I think you could keep it if you wanted to keep it and then wrap it and put, like, something on top of it. I hope you didn't want to you know, spend the time with that. Oh, oh see, look, 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 see? I guarantee you she's smelling that. Yeah. That's fascinating to me. It, it, was all, it was filled all in here. That's definitely the, the mice highway right there. Do you smell something? What are you smelling there? What are you smelling? <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess we should do this. There you go, sir. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Good man. <laughs> Gonna go for a ride? Oh, yeah.